Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. You'll see a men's soccer clash between perennial Region 20 powers and a battle between the number one and number two teams in the Maryland JUCO Conference. We'll start with men's soccer. Howard travels to Largo for a game with serious playoff implications. Derek Watte anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Howard has won three in a row. Two of those wins came in overtime. It can't get any more evenly matched than the Howard Prince George's robbery dating back to 2012. Each team has scored a 1-0 win over the other, and they battled to a 1-1 draw just two years ago. Soccer analyst David Owasson will be with us for this Region 20 matchup. David, how can Howard get the win against PG? Well, Derek, in such a massive game, Howard are going to look to come and establish their possession game with quick passing and movement off the ball. They would need to have an organized back line to deal with the strength and pace of PG. After playing one of the toughest non-conference schedules in the country, Prince George's enters the game with a 7-4-2 record. The Owls took on four of the top 63 teams in the nation, emerging with a win and three losses in non-conference play. It's paying off. Prince George's is undefeated against the region. David, how can PG take down Howard? Well, Derek, with the weather conditions looking the way they will be at kickoff, it's going to be tough for Howard to establish their possession game. So Prince George's are going to press them high up the field and try to make them uncomfortable on the ball. When they have the ball, they will look to stretch Howard's back line with long balls to their forwards. With a Region 20 win on the line, Howard takes on Prince George's. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Howard in possession. Alex Smith sends it in. The keeper loses it. Shahid Twyman following it in. Unable to punch in the rebound. Howard had to capitalize on that opportunity. A spill by the goalie resulted in a simple tap-in that was completely blundered. Set piece for the Dragons. Alex Smith will take it. Richard Lewis III with a big time save. The 5'9 goalie goes up and gets his hand on it. Another free kick for Howard. Smith gets inside the box. Abdel Yakuba with a huge touch to keep it away from Jason Mitchell. Owls regroup. Now they're looking to counter. Eureka deep. Kevin Chavez looking for Kelly Marat. Christopher Rolon with the challenge. Still Marat. Through ball to Chavez. Brian Zapinski, what a save. Excellent 50-50 win by Kelly Mara and a great through ball to create the shooting opportunity. But tremendous save by Sapinski to push the shot wide. PG seems to be controlling the battle in the midfield with their strength and physicality. Once again, PG is able to quickly take it from their final third to Howard's. Mara up against Tyler Kostopoulos. Mara gets down the side, three owls inside the area. David Alabisi is there, can't put in the goal. 26 minutes till the half, Sapinski sends it along. And deep, Neo Gustandino. Midfield battle was won by Chavez. PG starting to get forward themselves, putting plenty of pressure on Howard now. Kostopoulos concedes the throw. Four minutes later, Prince George's corner kick Gustandino gets it out of the box, but Chavez keeps it going for PG, moves it along to Angelo Rodore. Kostopoulos now, Rodore regaining possession for PG. Here comes the cross. Roll on, heads it out. Eureka deep, defended well by Smith. 10 in blue, at a J plays it back. Here comes a long ball, dangerous ball. PG has numbers, Angelo Rodore. Prince George's takes the lead. The initial mistake starts because of a poor clearance by Kostopoulos after he wins possession. That allows Prince George's to recycle the ball and find an over-the-top ball while the Howard backline is trying to organize. Excellent run and calm finish by Angelo Rodori. Falls to Emmanuel Wright. Wright beats two defenders, retains possession in traffic. He's taken down right outside the penalty area. Free kick for Howard. Alex Smith right into the wall. Jonathan Horrocks wins the ball for Howard, puts it in the box. Prince Georges clears the ball successfully. Another long ball. Tyler Kostopoulos is the only man back for Howard. Gets there first, concedes the throw. 
Eight seconds till halftime. Corner for PG. Good ball into the area. Adetunje attempts the volley. Goes down. Chavez off the leg of Adetunje. Nenba waved off by officials. Time expired. Controversial takeaway of the goal. A great finish is taken away due to the halftime buzzer. I bet PG is really upset at that. Second half, Dragon switched the field. Howard seems to be getting frustrated throughout the game because PG is pressing them high and not allowing them to establish comfortable possession. Howard's goal kick is short and right to Redore. Mba plays it right to Adetunje. PG begins to get a rhythm with their combination play and begin to start taking shots from distance at the keeper. Throw in for the Dragons, they go to Emmanuel Wright. Tremendous turn by Wright, but PG has a well-organized backline that swarms him and does not allow him to give service. Free kick for Howard, Smith takes it. Lewis loses the ball, Walter Gonzalez. Broken up, back to Gonzalez. Robbed by CeeLo Grice. Another spill by the goalkeeper creates an opportunity for Howard, which they are not able to capitalize on again. 26 minutes remaining. Right, excellent anticipation. Dragons have something here. Bad touch by Grice. Way to be brave by Lewis to get off his line quickly and close down the shooting opportunity for Howard. 23 minutes. Mora in deep, slaughters it away. Two goal lead for Prince George's. Excellent low hard strike by Ndeep. You get the sense that that one might be the deciding blow. What a shot from the freshman out of High Point High School. Inside of 10 minutes now, Dragons lose possession. Owls on the counter, Mora out of Tunje. Well done, another excellent driving run and through ball by Attitude. A great reaction saved by Zapinski. Prince George's picks up a Region 20 win. 2 0 is your final. Let's go to Amid Hassani. Tell us, give us a walkthrough of how you approach the game because considering both teams have a similar win loss record. Uh, the PG has always been good competition for us every year, and uh, we approached it hoping to get the three points, send a message to us of the conference, but Unfortunately, it came out like it did, so. And Alec, um, I'd like, I like you to give us a run through. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a slip and slide out here with the wet conditions. Um, did, how, did, how much did that affect your gameplay? Uh, it affected both teams. Um, obviously, it affected the goalies. Uh, made it harder for them to stop shots. I tried to get a lot of free kicks put on the goalie, um, but it obviously didn't work. It, um, wasn't, we weren't able to move the ball as effectively as we would have liked in the middle and out wide. Um, but both teams have to play in it. Um, so I think we could have done a better job. And to kind of piggyback off of that, my next question would be uh, to, to you, John. Can you tell us uh, what, what was going on in the halftime break? Because it seemed like the intensity kind of flared up, especially with Coach Dragunov receiving a red, uh, sorry, a yellow card. So what was he telling you during that break? I think uh, Dragunov was telling us that it was a solid first half. We were unlucky to uh, and uh, the half down a goal, but he told us that we had to get the first goal, which unfortunately we didn't, and it put us out of the game a little bit. Once they scored the second, we couldn't get back in it. Well, you, you did have some opportunities in the second half. Uh, was there anything that you could have done differently? Um, honestly, just be more lethal and make sure the shots go in the back of the net. So, Well, it was an overall magnificent effort on, on both teams, and best of luck to you three gentlemen for your next game. And I'm Omid Hosseini and this is Dragon's Lair Update. My first guest played soccer professionally in Bulgaria, Portugal, and Hong Kong. This is his 12th season at Howard. Head coach Stefan Dragunov joins me now. Welcome, coach. Thank you, Dan. Coach, assess your team's performance against Prince George's. Um, the game against Prince George Community College, all the games against them, uh, they've been uh, uh, games where we expect them uh, with um, high expectations to win game uh, against them. Um, we started the game very well. Uh, we had uh, a pretty good uh, first 30 minutes in this game. Um, good domination, good uh, uh, ball distribution, uh, spread the field, create some very good chances. 
Um, unfortunately, we couldn't convert these chances to uh, get kind of benefits of the, this domination. And then, uh, you know, the, the goal that we can see it was kind of a not right and perfect time for us. Um, unfortunately, that break the momentum. Uh, as you know, uh, in the game of soccer, when you know the momentum shifts, uh, uh, sometimes it goes well for uh, the team that the momentum shifts because they are down. Um, we can see the goal. Uh, then we couldn't find uh, the same way that we started uh, uh, the game for the rest of the, that game. So tell us a little bit about your season, because this has been a kind of an unusual season for you, hasn't it? Um, it kind of reminds me my first years here, uh, when I had to deal with uh, some new things uh, um, compared to where I came from. Uh, very young, I would say, uh, not enough mature group uh, uh, to deal with uh, this season. Um, players that... Uh, I don't think they have yet understand uh, the expectations we have and set here in this uh, in this program. Um, hopefully, by the you know the the playoffs, uh, we'll be able to uh, convince these players uh, and this group uh, that uh, um, the place where it's a serious business and uh, they'll step up and uh, kind of present the school and the program well in the playoffs. So do you think we'll be able to get more consistency from, from then on? That's another thing we work in it. Uh, there's, there was some very good games and performances and some games that we, we couldn't even recognize our players. So working on consistency for the rest of the season before the uh, playoffs, uh, it's uh, uh, something that uh, the coaching staff uh, uh, will be working hard. Now we've got some strengths in this group. Talk to me a little bit about the strength of this of this group. Uh, they mentioned this group, uh, the uh, players with uh, great skills. Uh, Emmanuel Wright from uh, last season, our top scorer from uh, uh, and the best uh, offensive player from last season. He is in, uh, in uh, um, good, uh, I would say, uh, form, and I expect that he will finish the season like that. Um, he's a consistent threat to uh, any of the, the defensive lines uh, in our opponents, so I expect his leadership on the field uh, uh, up front on the final third will, will give us a, a lot of uh, hope that we can make good run in the playoffs. Coach, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Dan. It's time for women's soccer. The top two Maryland Juco contenders battle for three points. Let's go to Derek Wate. And thanks, Diane. Howard enters the game ranked seventh in the D3 national poll, looking for a statement win against a Division I program. The Dragons have won eight straight entering the CSM game. They've outscored opponents 25 to three during their win streak. Soccer analyst David Owasson will be with us for this Maryland JUCO showdown. David, what is Howard looking to do against CSM? Well, Derek, Howard are gonna look to get their runs from their deep line midfielders so they can create shooting opportunities in the 18. College of Southern Maryland is 4-2 and two entering the game. The Hawks have traditionally been a tough opponent for the Dragons. CSM has won two of their last three meetings against Howard convincingly. David, how can College of Southern Maryland get the win? Well, Derek, it will be important for CSM not to surrender possession away in bad areas. Because if they do, Howard will punish them and capitalize on those chances. Howard's looking for a big win on the road. Dragons take on the Hawks next. Let's go to the highlight. Dragons winning the possession battle early. Katie Guerin plays it to Rebecca Coughlin. Cross to Brittany Nixon. Still Nixon gets up and pushes it to Jen Craven. Off the mark. Corner kick for CSM. Liz Parks gets it first. Sarah Yao from long range. The shot is wide. 8.50 till the half. Here's a chance for College of Southern Maryland. Alexis Porterfield takes it down far touchline. Parks comes back and wins the ball for Howard. Other end of the field, Savannah Holt throws it in. Bounces to Becky Minnelli. Yeah. She scores! Woo! Minnelli gives Howard the lead. Off of the long throw by Howard, excellent strike by Minnelli, who's been a big player for Howard all season. 20 seconds till halftime, Becky Minnelli. Diagonal ball in space for Coglin. Catches the run of Coglin, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. It's Coglin. 
A dagger just before halftime. Elation for Howard. Disaster for CSM. Excellent through ball by Manelli to Coglin which split the CSM backline and great composure shown by Coglin to finish it far post away from the keeper. On to the second half, two goal lead for the Dragons. Tara Miller breaks up the long pass. Nikki Manny wins it back for Howard. Defended by Rachel Yaddy, Manelli gets it back for Howard. Holt into the area, on to her left. Holt saved by Sydney Schultz. Throw in for Howard. Craven, Manning. Julia Lesko wins it for CSM. Sydney Wren Mason pounces on her and rips it away. Goes by Yaddy. Cross to Mobley. Goal! That's three goals in 13 minutes. Howard dominating CSM right now. The pressure on CSM's back line by Wren Mason allows Howard to win the ball back. Excellent driving run and service creates a goal scoring opportunity for Howard. Howard in possession. Craven. Mobley. Wide to Manning. Craven and Coglin running into the box. Manning picks out Coglin. The volley sails over the bar. Hawks have it now. Barnett gets down the side. Long ball to Tara Collins. They're unable to connect. Coglin takes it the other way. Collins stays with Coglin, looking to slow her down with just some kind of contact. Coglin beats the challenge. Jade Green wins the ball back for CSM, looking for Danielle Bowling. Picked off by Taylor Nowoski. Dragons on the counterattack. Nowoski keeps her head up, goes wide to Craven. Craven unmarked in the area. Craven! Save made by Schultz. Great save by Schultz in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. She got low and reacted to the shot quickly. Nowoski once again beats a white shirt to the ball and sparks the counter. Relentless pressure from Howard. Hawks in possession, looking to strike quickly. But yet again, they're unable to connect in the final third. The door is slammed shut by Howard. Set piece for College of Southern Maryland. Dangerous ball from Julia Lesko. Darcy Bonzioni, strong play. She takes the hit and still manages to control the rebound. Statement win for the Dragons, 3-0. Howard is your final. Let's send it down to Hamid Hosseini. How did it feel heading into the second half? Um, well, we were definitely trying to, it was gonna, we knew it was going to be intense and a 2-0 lead is the hardest to keep. So we just had to keep our focus on the game and push through it. Were there any strategies or game plays that maybe you could have done differently? We basically just wanted to keep it a shutout and make sure that all the things that we've been working on in practice stayed consistent throughout the whole game and make sure any improvements that we needed, we did through the game. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your ninth consecutive victory and you only have one loss next to your team name. Yeah. So tell us, what does that do for your confidence now that we're prog progressing into the season? I mean, I think with that one loss was um, in the early beginning of the season that really, I think we needed that to realize like, okay, we don't want to lose another one. So um, I guess staying motivated and confident through practice and games are what's keeping us winning and staying positive, so. Okay, so my question to you, Darcy, is what's been the key to being a very successful goalkeeper? Honestly, it's not all me, it's my team. It starts from the very top of our formation and works all the way back. So we just keep our eyes on the ball and. Hope that it doesn't go in the net. <laughs> this is Dragon's Lit Update. I'm Omid Hassani. It's a pleasure to welcome six-time Region 20 champion coach Kate C. Gross to the program. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Let's talk about the College of Southern Maryland. Let's assess their performance. What's there to say? Um, they, they didn't show much of what they used to be. Um, I don't know if that's because they're, maybe they're down a little bit or we're actually a lot better. Um, our team played extremely well that game and we were able to do the things that we've been working on all year and do it well and it's probably the best we've played. Now way back in August when you started developing this, this team, did you ever think that they would be this strong at this time? I had no idea what to expect. Um, I knew our, our numbers, I thought our numbers were gonna be a little lower. Um, I thought, you know, 
well, you, it seems like whenever we have low numbers, we have better success. I'm not sure why that is. But what was nice about this team was there was no drop off. You know, we could put 11 people out there. We have six subs and all of those subs could go in and our level is not going to drop. So I guess our depth this year is probably one of the best teams we've ever had. Uh, and that's what's really nice is when we sub, we know that we're just gonna be as strong. Where a lot of times if you may have strong nine, 10 players, if you're lucky, even strong 11, but you look at your bench and you're kind of curious who you're gonna play and, and be able to hide that weakness where we don't really have any weaknesses this year. We're, we're strong across the board. So that's, that was a surprise. So talk to me about your staff, your assistant coaches. How important are they to the success of this program? Oh, there's no question. I, would, I wouldn't be here without them. Um, Athena is, I'll talk about her first, is she's brilliant. Um, she reads the game. You know, it's, it's her call as to what formation we're going to use, what, you know, we always discuss who we're going to start in what positions, but one of her strengths is she can look at another team and know what formation they're playing and how we're going to beat it. And it's, she's incredible with it. So, I mean, she, this is her, this is her calling. Um, she may not know it. You know, she keeps saying she wants to be a dentist. I'm not quite sure that she should because the, the, the soccer world would be losing an incredible coach because she is, no question, we would not be where we are without her expertise. She's excellent. and She's been great ever since she came on board. Um, I brought on Jonah Schumann this year for our goalkeeping, and he has been excellent. He is out there three days a week, which is what we agreed on. You know, he's actually come probably even more than that. He is so dedicated and he's so good with these girls and he's really taught Darcy and Marissa like some incredible techniques. So um, this staff has probably clearly been one of the best I've had in my career. Good luck, Kate, the rest of the season. Thank you. It's time for women's volleyball. Howard takes on Cecil in a Maryland Juco showdown. Derek Watte anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. The Dragons have already exceeded their 2014 win total and have won three of their last four entering the Cecil match. Howard's three leading hitters are sophomores. They'll be pumped up for this one as it's their final regular season game in the Dragons' lair. Volleyball analyst Mike Cerrone will be with us for this Maryland Juco clash. Mike, how do you expect the Dragons to go after Cecil? Well, Derek, if Howard's offense can pinpoint the back line and attack that whole entire back line of Cecil, it's going to be more difficult for the Seahawks to set up Aubrey Cresswell, Cecil's offensive weapon for a kill. That's how important having a libero or defensive specialist is on your team. For instance, Alia Mustafa, the Dragons libero, she creates a lot of good chances with her passes from the back line, which Cecil doesn't possess. Chelsea Perinella, who is top five in multiple offensive categories in the Maryland Juco Conference, has a lot to do with the work of Mustafa setting up those chances. Coach Troy will look for her and Mustafa to take advantage of the weak back line of the Seahawks. Cecil College enters the game riding a three-match win streak. The Seahawks have struggled against Howard recently, losing each of their last three meetings with the Dragons. To beat Howard, Cecil is going to have to rely heavily on Aubrey Cresswell. Mike, what does Cresswell bring to the Seahawks? Well, Aubrey Cresswell is the leader of the Seahawks. She flies high and it's in top five in kills, kills per set, hitting percentage, and aces per set in the Maryland Juco Conference. Really, everyone, if you look at a train, if the conductor falls off, the train stops. So really, limit the productivity of Cresswell and Howard's gonna come out with a W. Howard and Cecil take the court next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First set, Julia Boris, outside to Chelsea Perinello. Chelsea Perinello with a huge block is too much to handle for the Cecil wall. Cecil serving Howard. Alia Mustafa finds the setter. Boris, Taylor Bowen, big swing. The Dragons use yet again their fourth ranked offensive attack in the Maryland Juke of Conference to beat the blocking wall. Cecil sends it over. Mustafa gets it to Boris. Julia Boris sets up a beautiful ball, which is timed perfectly by Perinello to split the back line. Howard runs away with the opening set, 25 to 10. On to the second, three-point lead for Cecil. How about that serve by Kylie Shiflett? Howard serving Cecil now. Seahawks get into their system. 
There she is again, Aubrey Cresswell with a huge kill down the center, which came with too much heat for libero Alia Mustafa. Six point lead for Cecil, Perinello serving for Howard. Perinello gives the Seahawks a taste of their own medicine, showing the power of her topspin, grabbing the point for the Dragons via the ace. Cecil's lead is down to four, Cresswell out of the back, handled by Perinello. Receiving a beautiful short set, Stephanie Bartella slams it home, igniting the comeback. Dragons back on top, Bartella with the serve. We see the formation of the Dragons break down here as the back line split up too far, leaving the end line open for the kill. Contrary to the breakdown of the Dragons, you see the back line of the Seahawks leaves the short side wide open for the teardrop point for the Dragons. Taylor Bowen gives Howard the lead. Ensuing rally, Seahawks on the attack, Cresswell on the outside, hard driven ball. The cannon from Cresswell was dug out, but the free ball over went a touch too far, though a valiant effort from Howard to get an otherwise impossible chance. Next play, Cecil goes right back to Cresswell. With yet another rocket from Cresswell, but this time Essence Holtzclaw digs it out for a free ball, yet a miscue from the Seahawks gives the point to Howard. 24-24 late in the second. Doing what she does best, Mustafa sets up the perfect chance off the serve, and Howard's Perinello slams it home to take advantage near the end of the game. Dragons come back to win the second. Howard leads the match two sets to none. Third set, Perinello buries it in the corner for her sixth service ace of the night. Howard goes on to win the third set, 25-15. Howard gets win 16 on sophomore night. Taylor, that was a terrific win. What are your thoughts after the game? It was a really exciting game. Like again, it was sophomore night, so there was a lot of energy already, and we got to go out and play our best. New players got to come in, and there was a new rotation every time, but we played strong the entire game, and I thought it was really great. I loved playing next to everyone, and it was a great last home game. It was really exciting. Brittany, so how do you feel the team's playing right now, putting some wins together? How do you feel about the, the way the team's playing? I feel like we're really coming together a lot better than we did in the beginning of the season. We're all really growing individually, and then when we grow individually, we grow as a team, which really helps us get our victories and just score every point at, as a time, at a time, and it's really good. Um, I think we're all getting better, even in different positions. Like, we're all trying different things, which is really cool that our coaches are helping us integrate into different positions that we're not used to. So, like, I play middle sometimes, and I'm not a middle hitter, but it's really fun to play and get to, get to the position and everything. So it's, we're coming together. Taylor, how about you? How do you feel the way the team's playing right now? I think we're great. We really mesh really well as a team. We all have strengths that we bring together. We all fight together. We all lose together. We win together. And I've never been on a team that's very one like this one is this year. It's amazing. Ladies, congratulations on the big win. Thanks. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash Sports. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!